Everything has a beginning. What started out as one man's vision to feed the people with HIV AIDS who fell through the cracks of society grew to become the goal of hundreds. This past year, the Pavarello Food Bank provided enough groceries to their clients to create more than one million meals. I met Father Bill about approximately 20 years ago. I was involved with a group of friends, decided to adopt a family for Christmas as opposed to buying each other Christmas gifts. We found this family with uh, HIV in the family. Three of the children had HIV who being raised by a grandmother. Didn't know the organization that we even got them from. And after we'd had the event, uh, we raised about $800 between us. We bought toys, we bought clothing. We got together with uh, some of the folks and said, well, we want to keep on doing this. And Carol told us at that time that uh, this organization was called Pavarello, started by a priest named Father Collins from St. Coleman's Church. I said, well, I've been to St. Coleman's Church. I must know this man. Said, well, you must meet him. I said, okay, fine. So we tried on several occasions to get together, but if you know anything about Father Collins, he's kind of like the wind. He's very difficult to get together with. When I finally went to the church knocking on the door, and he, he had me come in, I met in his office. I told him what we had done. He said, yeah, he's heard about it. I said, well, we want to do more, Father, but I think we did too much for one family. And then he, this time he told me about all of the young men, especially in the hospital at Imperial Point, that uh, at Christmas time, their depression levels were up, families were rejecting them, they were alone, they didn't really have much of a Christmas. And if we could put on some kind of a Christmas meal, a little party, maybe a few gifts, I said, okay, we'll do that. And so my group got together, we met. We had the first fundraiser then at my home. We invited everybody that we could think of. They had to bring a cover dish, 25 bucks, and Big Carol, we referred to at that time, made sure that each and every one of us, first of all, gave our 25 bucks. Nobody got in for free. I think that first day we raised about 3,700 bucks. So then we went shopping. Went straight to Chardis restaurant, which was one of the big prominent restaurants in Wilton Manors at that time asked Tony and Chuck if they would do a Christmas dinner for us to give us a really, really good price. Absolutely, they were just trick, thrilled to do it for us. So we got together then and we decided, well, let's buy some, some gifts so that we can uh, give people that come to this event a, a, a gift of some sort. So we went out and bought sweatsuits. We got Sony to donate Walkman radios. We bought some toiletry bags, like, like a gunny sack or whatever you call shopping bags red and green tissue paper. We got some of the pharmacies around town to donate things like toothpaste, shaving cream, razors, toothbrushes. So we went to St. Coma's church in the uh, church hall. And one Saturday we're having this huge wrapping party. We're wrapping these big boxes with the uh, sweatsuits in them, the Walkman radios filling the toiletry bags. So we end up with 250 big boxes, 250 toiletry bags. I says to Father, Father, we'll be back next Saturday to pick all this stuff up to take to Chardis for the dinner. He says, oh no, you can't do that. I said, what do you mean we can't do that? He says, they have school in here all week long. You've got to get all this stuff out of here. So we all proceeded to load our cars. My home was filled with boxes, bags. Every one of us had a house full of stuff. The event was terrific. And this is how the, form, the forming of the Pavarello Auxiliary took place. This group of friends decided we want to keep on doing this. We met some other people along the way. We probably had never more than 10 or 12 people that were members of our group. We all had jobs, so we couldn't come and work at the center. We couldn't work in the food bank. We couldn't work in the thrift store. So we did extra events, and we wanted to do extra things for the clients besides just give them a box of food. Well, our first big event after the one at my house, which was the last one at my house, by the way, was our bowl-a-thon. So we had our first annual bowl-a-thon pretty much 20 years ago now. And I think at the first bowl-a-thon we raised about 6,800 bucks. Every year since it's been a progressive, better, better, better. We took the clients on trips on the intercoastal. We would have Christmas and July parties where we would have pony rides for the kids, barbecue outdoors at St. Clement's Church. So we had a lot of fun and I, you know, it was kind of a special thing to me. It was always a, a great, great, a great inspiration to see the joy of these people's faces and know that we were doing something to help them. But uh, the day I met Father Bill, I guess that's the day that changed my life. 
I shortly thereafter was invited to join the board of directors. I became the treasurer of the company. We were all volunteers at that time. There were no paid staff. And it's been a long, uh, fun 20 years. And I met Father Bill about 18 years ago, and I met him at a fundraiser uh, called Night of a Thousand Stars. And uh, that's how I became involved with Pavarello. Um, I decorated the hall that year for the party. I uh, also did the floral arrangements, and uh, that's how I became involved. And then I started decorating boats for the Winterfest Boat Parade for them. Uh, to make sure that people were aware of what Pavarello was and uh, made people aware of the, the whole AIDS and HIV epidemic. I've known Father about five years. Um, it was kind of a chancy meeting. We, uh, uh, there was a, a committee meeting for a charity function to support, raise funds for Pavarello. And my friend was on the committee and she contacted me and said, I'd love you to be involved in this and you're going to love the gentleman that's working on the project, Father Bill. So I said, well, I knew Father from, you know, around in the uh, community. So I said, I'd be happy to come over and, and work with you and do what we can. It was around 2001 when I first came to Pavarello Food Bank when case management sent me to uh, get my food here and do my referral. And when I was picking up my food, I met Father Bill. He was handing out the food to the rest of the clients. I met Father Bill about 10 years ago, um, and then he was here at the center for the first time. I met him several years ago through B. Gallagher Carty, who's a major philanthropist in this town, and um, we've been friends ever since. He's remarkable, he's brilliant, he's inspirational. Uh, his idea to begin helping people out of the trunk of his car has just bloomed into something, I'm sure, much larger than he ever thought it would be. It's much larger than I ever thought it would be. And uh, he's just done a remarkable job in changing people's lives. Unbelievable. Compassion. Um, you know, the gentleman is extremely dedicated to working for the welfare of others, uh, in this case people with uh, HIV and AIDS, and uh, is just absolutely dedicated to doing that job, uh, works hard at it, um, tries to see that people get special attention when they need it in terms of items from the food shop uh, as well as items from the uh, um, surf shop. So he's just a, a, a unbelievable person in my mind. He's phenomenal. Just uh, the way he is, the way he is with people, the way he works with people, what he does, the way he's dedicated his life to, to helping people in need. You know, he's blessed me and I'm truly blessed to have him in my life. I guess it would be compassion. Um, Father Bill has a lot of compassion for all communities that live here in Broward and not only here in Broward but across the country and the world. So compassion, I guess, would be the word. I'd say he's an angel. Generous. The Pavarello Center Thrift Store is the funding arm for the overhead of the organization. Donated items ranging from clothing, electronics, home accessories, furniture, medical equipment, appliances, and much, much more are taken to various sorting areas where individual managers price and then display the merchandise in the store. The food bank is the main purpose of Pomerillo to provide for the nutritional needs of men, women, and children living with HIV AIDS. Some food is donated to the food bank through various food drives throughout the county, as well as donations from several local markets and local bakeries that provide the clients of Pavarello with many items that they certainly couldn't afford to purchase. However, most of the food is purchased from money raised or from grants from various organizations.
Each day, volunteers unpack the pallets of food that are purchased from the various wholesale vendors and packed into bags or boxes and distributed to clients. Clients do have the flexibility to select certain items. Others are a standard assortment of canned goods, condiments, and so forth through cooperating agencies such as Tuesday's Angels. Other items such as cleaning products, toiletries, and paper products are also supplied. In addition, the center also provides alternative therapies including yoga, acupuncture, and chiropractic care. Several years ago, there was a realization that not just the nutritional needs, but also physical fitness was important to the clients remaining healthy. Thus, Friends Fitness, an entirely equipped gym for the Pavarello clients was born. Run fully by volunteers from the center, it is the key building block for the continued well-being of those who look for the Pavarello Center for assistance. During the year, Pavarello holds several fundraisers. One of the most popular is the annual Pavarello Bolathon. During its nearly 20 years of existence, over $1 million has been raised to purchase groceries to feed the clients of Pavarillo. Everything has a beginning. Later this year, Pavarillo will be moving to a new facility located on Dixie Highway, just south of Five Points in Wilton Manors. This new state-of-the-art complex will be the next building block of one man's dreams.